Hey, Bobby Duke Arts, Bobby here. <laughs> All right, I wanna tell you this video is sponsored by Skillshare, thank you so much to them. Hang around to the end of the video, I'll tell you about the exclusive offer that only you guys can get by using the link down in the description. Also, if you would like to skip ahead to this timestamp, that'll skip some of the shenanigans that I get into while I'm at New York Maker Faire. Hopefully you won't, you'll just stick around and watch it because you love me. Anyways, on to the video. There sure are a lot of people here. Yeah, Maker Fair is pretty sweet. All kinds of stuff like cow nibble or cat nibble. Professional nibbler. I want to be a professional nibbler. Adam has his own farts in a bottle. I didn't know that. I. Oh, <laughs> That's episode. awesome. That was real weird. That was very, very weird. Yeah, it was pretty weird. <laughs> well, of course. Of course they do that. Get out of my face, camera, John. What are you doing? What? Casey, nice what? Set. what? I love your video. I love your vlogs, dude. You're welcome. That was real weird. You gotta say it. I want that, so I made that. <laughs> oh, dude, he totally did. I'm a broke high school student. Cardboard's everywhere, so uh, I'm also a big Marvel fan. This is a Stormbreaker. Yeah. Bobby made one too. Iron Man. Iron Man. All so, out of cardboard. All out of cardboard. Well, here. Go ahead and pick which one of the two. I think I'll take this one. Take the one from the video? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's called YouTube uh, slash Craftsman Studios. Sweet. Two subscribers right now. But... Go check his channel out. Very nice there we go. I want that. He wants it, so he's going to get it. There you go. That's the oh, second that's one. that's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, thank thanks, you, dude. Sir. No problem. Oh my gosh. Guys, look who it is. That's Jimmy Duresta. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think I think his ice picks are about this big. Hey! No. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh. Wow, that was a long run. <laughs> Hi. If you didn't notice, I just stole Jimmy Duresta's ice pick. Look at it. It's beautiful. Whoa. If you don't know who Jimmy Duresta is, well, let me show you. I want that. I've always wanted one of these, but you know, I think I can turn it into something cooler than just an ice pick. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. What I plan on doing is disassembling this and turning it into this. Oh, wait, no, this. This is a sword slash dagger doohickey design that I came up with. It started as just a pencil sketch. Then I imported this, scanned it, and put it into paint. Went ahead and cleaned it up and shrunk it down. Also, I asked my patrons which design they liked better. Overwhelmingly, they all wanted that. By the way, go check out my Patreon. Link in description. If all of you would just donate one dollar, I'd have like 1.9 million dollars. Wow. I could get a lot of weed with that. Uh. What we're gonna do to get this starty farted, I need to remove this brass handle part from this spike and I think that it's held in place by some super glue so we're just gonna pop that off with the torch disassemble it uh. whoa <laughs> excuse me <laughs> uh, let's make a little knife Look at that. Alex Steele could learn a few things from me. <laughs> uh, not really. Hold on a second. <gasps> oh my goodness, what did I do? Yes, it's real. I really did shave, but thankfully, hair grows back. Okay, now let's get on to actually forging this little knife. But first, I gotta show you something really cool. Something cool that came in the mail. It's, it's down here, right? Well, come on, down here. I gotta do everything for you. Look at this, it's so awesome. This was sent to me by another YouTuber named 
Oh my gosh. That was just literally on my head. On the side of my face. <laughs> okay, now back to what I was saying. This really real but miniature hammer and anvil was sent to me by Paul Pinto. And I mean, look at these things. They're awesome. Handmade. Anyways, he shows how he makes these on his channel. I will put a link to his channel in the description down there. Yay. Well, uh, that didn't work very well. Hmm. Apparently brass is hard to forge. But you know what? I have another idea. I'm going to carve, well, here, let me show you. This, this piece right here, that's the brass part. I'm gonna carve that out of wax first, and then I'm gonna take it to a place that makes jewelry. They're gonna help me make a mold. Then I'm going to melt this brass and cast it. And here is the wax that I will be using. It comes pre-cut. Apparently it's really good to carve. We'll see how it does. It says hand carving. That's what I plan on doing. Well, I might carve it with my foot. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying something new. I've never done any kind of casting or learned how to do it. That will be really fun. And in the meantime, we're gonna work on this piece, which is the pointy bit. I just need to cut this piece of paper, the pattern out, and mark it on here. And then using my rotary carver, go back, carve that, carve the wax, Carve everything. Let's just carve everything, okay? Let's do that. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh look, it's a dinosaur. Not really, that's Joanna. She sometimes likes to get out of her cage and perch there and watch me work. Joanna, what are you doing up there, you crazy girl? Let's see if she loves me now. Do you love me? Oh, I guess not. It's the next day and we are on our way, or about to leave, to go get a mold made for this. Let's go! Oh! Oh! We're here! Well, that didn't take so long. We're at a place called Investacast. Yeah, I just googled where to get some of this kind of work done, and they said I could come in and learn how to do it. So let's go in! This is Investacast. Looks pretty cool. They got a swordfish. That's awesome. How's it going? I'm Bobby. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pretty. You guys make all of these? We do. We made them about 30 years ago. We have a lot of jewelry stores we deal with that like to have basic molds, uh -huh. either to fill up their cases or they're looking for something that's close, so it's cheaper to call and order a wax. That's cool. And then adjust it to whatever you want it to be. Whoa. This place is pretty rad. Okay, what's the steps we need to get this set up for casting? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a sprue to make it flow up to the top of the unicorn. 
<laughs> and the sprue is what the metal flows down through. Yes. It's like welding with wax. Yes. Exactly. See, this one is good. Yeah, this, uh, the brass I'm using is the handle to an ice pick that I have to use. I know it'd be easier just to use some other brass, but yeah. I gotta use the duress to brass. Okay, what happens next after we got the carving attached to the sprue and the base is we go into the next room where we mix up some stuff called investment, which is basically like a plaster, which then we pour into the cask, vacuum out all the air bubbles, and once that sets up over about 30 minutes, we take it over to the oven, which then not only dries the mold, but also bakes out all of that wax, leaving a void in the exact shape of the original carving. That mold, once dry, goes into this machine, melts the brass, and then spins up really fast using centrifugal force and injects the brass into the other side where the mold is, filling the cavity, producing the tiny hander for me to carve. This is the crucible, it's graphite line. All right, mm -hmm. it conducts electricity. All right? all right, this is an induction melt. And I'll tell you what, there may be aluminum in the alloy? In the brass. Right. It may have aluminum in it. Hmm. We'll know in a minute. What will it do if it has aluminum? Anyway, we're gonna find out. Okay. Okay, here is the actual casting process. You can see I'm looking down through a little sight glass and that is actually the brass melting. It's super cool. After it spins up and injects the brass, then we take the mold out of the furnace, smash it with a hammer, to then dig around and find the actual casting, clean it up, and there you go. Thanks, Investicast. Really cool. Tim, it was great meeting you. Thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Not a problem at all. Have a good day. Yes, sir. You too. All right, Robin. Thank you so much for having me out here. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you going by. Yes, ma'am. You guys have a great day. You too. Okay, we are back from Investicast. They did an amazing job. Thank you so much. If you're in the DFW area and you need something like this done, go check them out. Really what's left to do is to polish this up, do some cleaning, put the finger holes in, cut off the sprue, and then attach the blade after we finish it. So that's the next step. Okay, let's do that. Oh, thank you. Oh, whoa! <laughs> yeah! Does this every time. Yay! That's the strange looking dog. She loves me. Don't you love Ow. Oh, you know, just watch walking my pet dinosaur. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you're gonna get stuck. Oh. Careful, girl. I love you. Ah. I really think she's just mad at me because I won't give her any of Mary Hute's eggs. I mean, Joanna. I can't. She's the last golden eagle. Home, home on the range. Where the critters are all tied up in chains. Und yes, Azen, I'd say it is looking wunderbar und Azen. Azen? Yeah. Here's a quick tip. If you use the 3M sandpaper, it actually has an adhesive backing that is activated by heat. I just cut up some popsicle sticks, heat it with my torch over there really quick. Put the popsicle sticks down, cut these out, and then you have little bitty sanding sticks.
like that. Oh, shot. And they work pretty well. You should try it. All right, we've got the knife to this point. It's kind of hard to see it. Can you see it? It's right there. So what I plan on doing is hardening and tempering this, and that involves a process of getting this glowing red hot, dipping it or quenching it in oil, and then putting it in an oven at like 400 and something degrees. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I still need to do a little research. <laughs> First, the hardening will make it super hard but really brittle, and then the tempering should make it still hard but a little more durable. So um, let's do that, what do you say? Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, this is after the hardening. I have already tested it with a file, and it is skating a file, which means the file is not biting into it and taking off material, which means that it's hard. So now we gotta make it durable by putting it in the oven. Ooh, that's dirty. Now just turn the uh, undo on for fundo. Bake this for about an hour and a half, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, now let's check on it. Oh, wow. That looks delicious. Man, I really do suck at cooking. <laughs> oh boy, it's looking awesome. All right, we've got it all shined up. Focus, thank you, Mr. Camera. Now, the part that I am most afraid of, I'm going to try and solder with some paste flux and some regular solder. I'm not even sure what kind. I think it's like 60-40. Anyways, I'm going to put the little end in the hole and then heat it up, and that will act like a glue, so hopefully it'll bond even better than like epoxy. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm really scared because I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Please. <sighs> Let's do this. Okay, the knife is basically done other than sharpening it. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna use some Japanese wet stones. And the reason they're called that is, well, you get them wet in order to use them. So they look like this. This one's kind of dirty. The reason I think wet stones are superior to say oil stones or other is as you sharpen it, you kind of carve away the stone and the water helps wash away all those particles. So that way it doesn't get gunked up and it leaves a nice sharp surface for you to continue to sharpen. It sharpens faster in my opinion than traditional oil stones and what. Uh, the water is wet. So what you do is you take your whetstone and you get it wet you put it down in the water. Then you can, if you need to, take this leveling stone and what it does is it basically flattens the surface so that way it's nice, fresh and delicious. And what you do is you just go back and forth until it's nice and flat. I think that's good enough. So we're gonna start with the lowest grit number. So that's a 400. The higher the grit, the finer the stone. And then we're just gonna sharpen this little guy on up. Let's do it. Now once we've got the edge most of the way there, we're gonna switch to a, uh, a higher grit. So let's go to the 1000. See all that darkness? That's actually the steel coming off. Oh yeah, and stop what you're doing right now and go subscribe to PewDiePie because T-Series is about to surpass him in subscribers and we can't allow that. Okay, I've got it to where I think I can get it with the 1,000. Now we're gonna go with 1 billion. Actually, no. 
The 3,000, wow, this thing is dirty. So this is the finest stone that I own. They go way higher than this, but this is the finest one. I'd say that's sharp enough. Dang, and I just regrew that arm hair. Oh, shot. It is finished. Okay, now that it is totally done, let's go mail it to Jimmy and see what he thinks. Oh! Hey, we're here. They're open. Let's mail it. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Paul. Yes, Bobby. Will you ship this to Jimmy DiResta for me? Sure, I will. All right, thanks, man. Thank you all so much for making it to the end. All right, you know how I like to learn new things and experience new forms of art and always keep learning. Well, you can do that too. And I'm super thankful today that Skillshare decided to sponsor this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in woodworking, business, technology, and more. I highly recommend you guys start out by trying Stephanie Kilgas' Insect Sculpture Mantis Polymer Clay and Mixed Media class. It's a great course if you're getting into sculpture for the first time or just wanting to get back into it. Skillshare's premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts in their field so you can improve your skills. Skillshare is also more affordable than most other learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, so be sure to click the link in the top of the description. The first 500 people that do that will get their first two months free. Did you hear me? I said free. When you are through signing up at Skillshare, and I highly recommend you do, I just wanted to let you know that I will be at ThinkerCon, Huntsville, Alabama, November 17th. Dude, this thing is gonna be crazy awesome. So many cool creators are gonna be there. Go check their website out. I'll put it in the description as well. I think there's only like 100 something tickets left. So if you wanna go and say hi to me, which would be really cool to meet you guys, go check out ThinkerCon 2018. Also, if you want to see how I made the tiny little box at the end of the video, go check me out on Instagram. I will be doing an exclusive one minute video there just showing how I made that. Also, also remember to go check out Paul Pinto and Jimmy DiResta. He was a super good sport letting me steal his ice pick. By the way, he sells those. Go give that crazy maker some love for me. And also, thank you to my wife. You guys don't really know her very much, but my wife, Nicole, is amazing. She does so much stuff behind the scenes. She not only puts up with my crazy chaos, but she also is like the perfect sounding board and I bounce ideas off of her. She gives me like lots of the ideas come from her. So the unsung hero, one that I should talk about more, is my wife. I love you, honey. You're the best. I couldn't do without you, really. Anyways, I love you guys. You're awesome. Thank you guys. Really cool. Oh! Oh. <laughs> 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 <Mood>. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it's him making the noise. Ah! Dad, go! Or he's going. <laughs> 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 <laughs>